Shea Vizsla? Yep, D4. Let's talk about almost nobody's favorite character. Why would we do this, you ask? That's because a well-crafted, well-executed story can overcome a multitude of sins, and even take a character that you don't really like and at least make their arc interesting. Case in point, Shea Vizsla? Now, I don't like this character. Never did. Nor am I alone in this. She does not have much popularity. From the time we meet her, she's a jerk. And frankly, there's a whole lot of dark side characters that would have just ground her in the paste given the chance. A chance they had multiple times. But that doesn't mean you can't have an interesting story. And that's exactly what I think Bioware can do if they're willing to put in some effort. And that's a big if given the broadsword acquisition and the paring down of their writing staff. So who is she? Well, Mandalorian. Duh. She was a bounty hunter, did a lot of work with the Imperials. Big claim to fame seems to be that she's the one that took down the defense grid for Coruscant. That in itself kind of puts her on the dirtbag list. And apparently she did a lot more work with Malgus, not just the bag and tag of Coruscant. Apparently some time goes by and then she pops up on Rishi working for the Revenites. Good track record of picking employers. She gets bummed out about the Revenites for some reason, rather unspecified. And so she goes off and opens up her own little sports arena, of which, as the PC, we have to make our way through. Wasn't that a thrill? And this is our first introduction to her as the player. And I really can't think of one of my characters that wouldn't want to at least punch her out or, you know, slice and dice. The next time we see her is on Yavin 4 against Revan. And up to this point, she's not Nothing special. Runs a small little clan. Eh, who really cares? But then the cool happens. And the universe's most reliable spy, Theron Sean, drags her into the fight. Any port in storm, I guess. Somewhere in all of this, Mandalore gets killed, and ultimately, by default, she becomes Mandalore. As the PC, we meet her on Darvanus. And frankly, her leadership skills are lacking. She completely fails to inspire the troops under her command to go after these droids because they're just droids. And we all know if you ain't killing people, you ain't doing it right. But still, she's there and she gets the job done. And ultimately, a little while later, she can actually join your alliance and bring her crew along with her. So now you have a whole heap of Mandos guarding your ships and doing stuff. And I gotta say, I really didn't care one way or the other about her. Didn't like her, but so what? She's just a character. But then we start getting more Mando-centric content. And we all wonder what that come from. <clears throat> the Mandalorian. Strike while the iron's hot, eh, Bioware? And with these new Mando-centric stories, we start to see flaws and holes in her command and in her organization. Getting antsy, wanting to do more, feeling like they're just doing the Alliance's business, and she seems to have a fairly level head about it all. But as the threat gets fleshed out, we start to learn a little bit about Hedda Cole, she changes. More and more, Shea Vizsla is obsessed with her honor and showing that she is the leader. And sure, no leader wants to look weak. Then again, acting like a leader is always better than just getting upset that someone's making you look bad. However, by Runic, she's full-on obsessed, and those around her are beginning to see it. She won't let any distractions keep her from her prey. You sound like you have more to say. Like my gear, I double-checked my thoughts before battle. Cleared my doubts. Just never seen her like this. She was eager to step away from being Mandalore. Away from all of us and her actions start to be the detriment to the mission. Take, for example, how she handled Padawan Zahar. Our Jedi, even my dark side Jedi, had the situation under control. Then the head of Cole obsessed Shea Vizsla runs up shoots the comlink and demands information on Hedda Cole. Let's not worry about any of the other things going on. Let's worry about our own little personal mission. Then she tries to shoot the kid, losing the best chance anyone had of finding out what Malgus and company are up to. And instead of being a leader and addressing the concerns of our Jedi, no, she gets defensive. These are not the actions of a true leader. It'd be a relief, but after Elam, what do you want? Sahar, it's Rakan. Where are you? I need you to bring that holocron back to me. Shay! Where's Hedda Cole? We're not going to hurt you, Sahar. I promise. That isn't why we're here. Are you sure? Your friend seems to think otherwise. Tell her to back off. Darth Null's holocron. What did Malchus want with it? Just go! Get out of here! I don't know anything that can help you! You should come back with us. 
We can protect you. Gone! And she destroyed my tracker! We got nothing! Harchuk! It's only a matter of time before she sounds the alarm and brings an army back here. Come on! We need to ground the whole operation until we locate Hedda. What were you thinking? You're letting your obsession with Hedda destroy you. I didn't ask for your opinion. Let's move out. This becomes her running theme. More and more, it's about her against Hedda Cole. And it really seems to me that by the time this episode plays out, she's lost all control of herself. She's not worried about her command. She's not worried about her people. She's not worried about how it's all going to end. She's worried about how she can get a hold of Hedda Cole and wring her neck. All the while, only half-heartedly trying to convince herself and those around her that it's for the good of everyone. The duel was always mine to win or lose. No excuses. Hedda Cole and her hidden chain will need more than that to tear the Mandalorians apart. The hunt continues. Nothing will stand in my way. And once we hit old wounds, she's just going full on freak out, demanding the chance to talk to Malgus, blathering on how she's the only one can get any information out of him because she's the only one that really knows him jumping in on our comms, telling us what we're going to do because we need to know about Hedda Cole. Not a bit about Darth Null, not Malgus's plans, about her and her adversary. You're losing our only chance to ask about Hedda. More of his mystical Osik. What about the Holocron? Does Hedda have something she can use against my people? Where is she? Dindina Hutun, answer me! And her actions or obsessions not gone unnoticed by those under her command. Yukaya will send you an email about his concerns. He's still loyal, but you get the feeling that if things start going sideways, he might decide to take action. And that brings us to the main point of this video. We have a perfect setup for a character to take a really dark turn. Whether there's a redemption arc at the end or not, this is a great opportunity. Explore this obsession, watch Shea Vizsla fall, and the consequences of her action. Can our PC pull her out of it? Or will our PC help bury her in it? These are things I'd love to explore with Jedi, with Trooper, with everybody. I mean, the cool things you could say to her as a bounty hunter, someone who has immense respect within the Mandalorian community, or just what would a Sith Lord tempt her to do? Bioware is staring a gift horse in the mouth. What are they going to do? Honestly, as much as I don't like the Mandalorian storyline, this could be very interesting and pull it out of the dirt. Shea Vizsla's actions have a direct impact on the Alliance, Republic, or Empire, because if she loses control and things go pear-shaped, well, you're going to suffer too. They have a lot of hooks that they can use. I hope they start using some of them. It would be all too easy just to sweep this under the rug, let the theoretical big picture of Malgus and Darth Null overshadow things. Now, I want this to stay more personal when dealing with her. Because frankly, up to this point, I don't really give a hoot about Hedda Cole and her rebellion. But if they start using it to create consequences, now you can care. Now is the story you can really kind of enjoy and help egg on in one direction or another. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for Bioware to show that they are committed to character-driven stories. We all love the grand plots and schemes and then the big battles, but none of that has as much impact if you don't have personal stories going along with it. And this is a great place to start. Though frankly, I'd rather have a deep personal story with my PC and not Shea Vizsla, but we're back to that any port in a storm, aren't we? Can they pull it off? Will they give us multiple endings? Will this have any impact on our alliance? What do you think? Are you interested in the Shea Vizsla story? Let us know in the comments below. And dang it, I really need to stop calling them Bioware. Remember, leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.